Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble, and I am excited to be here with Gerard Longo from ECM Collective, and he'll explain in a minute what that is, but it's an exciting collective for musicians and connecting them with entrepreneurs and other creatives. So before we get into that, though, Gerard, I would love to know, what is your background in music? Why did you end up starting ECM Collective um, based upon kind of the journey that you've taken so far in music? Uh, it's a long and winding road, and I always like to say that I'm going to write a book one day, and it's going to be titled Completely by Accident, Colin, How I Stumbled into the Music Industry. Um, it started with my podcast, The Quinn Spin, Two Ends and Quinn, Two Ends and Spin, which just enjoyed its 10th birthday earlier this month here in Nashville. And I just needed an outlet. You know, I needed a creative outlet, and I had done college radio. One night I was listening through, you know, all of my you know, old episodes from the college run, which we'll never see the light of day now. But, it, you know, I, I remembered that, you know, we had an impact on our audience as small as it was to you're talking 10, 15 people a week, but they were there every week. They'd be giving us stuff for the show. They'd be laughing at and with us, you know, simultaneously when something went wrong on the air because we were live. And I just, you know, I was in corporate America at the time, feeling like a spoke in the wheel. Then, not to say anything bad about my job at the time, it was really cool and I learned a lot. But like, I, I just needed something that was mine, and this outlet was mine. And then from there, you know, we definitely had a focus on. Uh, it's funny because we went back and went back to all, the vault of all those old episodes from like the beginning of the run, right from 2013, 2014. And I listened to episode one. And I say on episode one that, you know, this is a platform for anybody building a thing. We want to highlight you. We want to feature you, right? And it became about music from there because, you know, part of what we did in college that I wanted to continue was featuring music, featuring musicians. And so I went on what was known as Twitter at the time. Now it's X. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and just found musicians to feature. And before you knew it, like we were getting flooded with submissions and it became about music. And then once my corporate job, once my contract there had expired, I'm, I leaned all in and became an independent creative full time myself. And so really, you know, formed this kinship with a lot of the musicians and other creatives in our community. And so from there, you know, 2013, 14, 15, the Quinn Spin has its OG run, take a little bit of a break. I take the show in my own direction um, because I had a team of co-hosts, you know, who have since come back into the fold. But everyone's lives started going in different directions, right? And so I had recently relocated out to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania from New Jersey, where I went to college at Moravian University now. And there's a music scene there about an hour north of Philly. And I'm like, okay, like I'll restart the show, but I'll have it be part of this thing, this blog called Lehigh Valley Underground, this regional blog that highlights local music, local musicians in the area, you know, reviewing their music and going out to their shows, taking photos, that kind of thing. And so that launched the beginning of 2016. So you go 2016, 17, 18, the Lehigh Valley Underground days where we're we're building community there locally in Eastern PA. You know, we're putting on events where we're building a lot of partnerships. Like we had caught fire in the region pretty quickly, you know, in 2016, early 2017, to the point where by the middle of 2017, we were doing a lot of really cool things and we're a pretty well-known entity locally. But Toward the middle back half of 2018, I really started to feel this pull to do something more, you know, and to connect more to the industry. I felt like my industry knowledge, you know, for where I was had just about maxed out and I wanted to keep growing. I wanted the platform to keep growing. And so I looked at going to an industry town, you know, New York was the closest one, but I actually ended up being convinced to move to Nashville by my good friend, um, Adam, who's in a band, the Mad Sugars. And, um, 
his wife, who's also my friend, Anna, they uh, had just gotten married. They lived in Nashville already. They're like, hey, why don't you give Nashville a try if you're looking to relocate? And so November 2018, relocate to Nashville. We rebranded Underground Music Collective, which we had been from that point until this Monday, October 2nd, when we're, we officially transitioned over to ECM Collective. And with UMC, it took a broader industry focus, you know, more educational content while still highlighting musicians, but broadening the scope of that too, in terms of it not being specific to a location and welcoming more genres, welcoming, you know, more, I guess, industry type of opportunities into the fold, you know, and through the UMC era, you know, we built a bunch of partnerships, got to do a lot of really cool things and really work with, you know, a lot of people at the highest levels of the music industry. And it's led now to this exciting world where not only are we connecting to those people, but we're connecting to people in the entrepreneurial space across industries and across locations. And we launched a coaching program in March, uh, which I think was a big pivot point for me because so much of what we do in that coaching program is foundational values-based, can apply to anybody on the creative journey, not just musicians. You combine that with the fact that over the course of the past year in particular, I've had a chance to connect with so many interesting people, you know, again, in different industries who have really gravitated toward our platform. And it got me thinking of what else this can be, you know, it got me thinking bigger as far as like, how do we take this work that we've done with these musicians and in the music industry and connect it to the world of entrepreneurship of the creative sphere in general, right? Because the music industry, if you're trying to go the traditional route is a tough gig, right? And for most musicians, you have to think like an entrepreneur. You have to think as though you're building your own platform, you're building your own brand and music is a vehicle by which you communicate the values of that brand, right? And so there's so much common thread between your independent musician and your entrepreneur in any field. And so over the summer, I went back north for a couple months, you know, I went all the way back to where this started, back to my parents' house, <laughs> you just in the woods, you know, where I could go pen to paper like Hemingway and just come up with what the next phase of this whole ecosystem was going to be. And I had been poking around at, you know, launching a membership program before that trip, right? Uh, but I didn't really have the idea fleshed out. So this gave me the opportunity to do that, made me realize in the process, like, we're missing opportunities if we just keep it narrow. And we're also depriving the musicians, the music industry folks of opportunities if we just create this silo that's contained within music. Music affects everything. Music affects every creative field, every entrepreneurial endeavor that there is, right? And so why don't we now introduce these musicians, these talented people to the greater world of entrepreneurship and let everybody provide value to each other? Obviously, you know, the musicians can provide their services and their platforms and their perspectives to the other creatives in the group and the other creatives in the group can provide their knowledge, skills, and expertise to help the musicians fill whatever holes that they need to fill as they look to build their platforms. And so I settled on the name ECM Collective and ECM stands for two things. It stands for entrepreneurs, creators, and musicians. And it also stands for empowered change makers because the goal here is to unite an ecosystem of people who want to use their platforms for good, want to use their platforms to have an impact. I'm a big believer in the rising tide raises all boats. And so this, in a more true sense than we've ever done before, allows everybody involved to do that. Everybody can learn from each other. Everybody can grow together. Everybody can build their platforms in conjunction with each other. And what we aim to create is our own ecosystem, our own industry within all of these creative industries, you know, to the point where it's self-sustaining, you know, it doesn't depend on the traditional industry in any one field in order to thrive. And so the sky is the limit. I feel, you know, I felt for years like UMC was the final form and the magnum opus. And now I feel that way about this, about DCM until I find the next magnum opus, right? Because there's always growth. There's always evolution. But I feel like this was the place we were always going to land, you know, and, you know, when I started the Quinn Spin in 2013, I, there's no way I could have seen that, right? Because I don't even know if the technology existed to connect people all over the country in the way that we can now in 2023. But this is where we were always going to land, you know, back at this thing, this full circle experience where we're connecting creatives to each other and we're helping them grow their platforms. So that is the Cliff's Notes of the past 10 years and how it's brought us to where we are. Oh, I love that. You're totally speaking my language. I mean, I love, first of all, that you're like, 
I just followed what I thought I should be doing now. And then it led me here and it led me here. That's kind of how it worked for me as well with, you know, being an independent musician and then starting Women of Substance Radio, which led me to helping other female artists. And then that led me to expanding even beyond to the Profitable Musician platform. But, you know, I started Profitable, I mean, I started um, the Female Entrepreneur Musician podcast in 2015. And I felt like my entire job of that podcast was to convince musicians that they needed to be entrepreneurs or that they are entrepreneurs and they needed to embrace that. I feel like now that we're in 2023, it's really, you know, that is, that's kind of come together. Like most people get that now. And I think the platform that you've created is just helping them expand upon that more. So it's really cool to see, you know, something that I feel like I was this huge you know, proponent of back in the day is now really becoming like mainstream because when I was a musician, man, I, you know how the industry back then, this is like the 2000s, right? So, so different. Like people weren't working like entrepreneurs. They, you know, you thought you had to have a label and a manager and all that stuff and, you know, work within the industry model. And then what I was coming out with was like, hey, you don't have to work within the industry model because that is just making it so much harder for you and you have all these gatekeepers and you have the ability to to you know move your own career forward by by acting like an entrepreneur and to see this all coming to fruition now is so great and to have a platform like yours where it's like not just like teaching them to do it but like saying let's come together as entrepreneurs musicians and other types of entrepreneurs I just think that's super cool. So I just want to say like props to you for doing that and, you know, and following where everything led you and it led you here. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, a couple thoughts on that, you know, first of all, intuition has guided this entire process. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's been so much ready, fire, aim and, you know, sometimes to my detriment, honestly, like sometimes it, intuitively, like I've gone down, you know, I've, I've pursued, you know, per, a particular aspect of the path and it ended up being, you know, a lesson instead of a, success right yeah. <laughs> so like but that there's value in that too you learn what doesn't work so you learn what does and then you can go and impart that to, to other people and that's an ongoing process for all of us no matter how long we've been in the game i mean i've been in the game now 10 plus years and i'm still learning things i'm still not always getting it right nobody always gets it right you know and especially with you know the evolutions of technology the evolution of the industry in general like and this goes, I think, for any industry, like there are things you have to keep up with. There are things that used to work that got you to a certain level that aren't going to get you any further that don't necessarily work anymore. Right. And so it's a constant game of adaptation. And a lot of it is feeling it out and that process of just, you know, trying to find the right way and what works for you. And, you know, the industry conversation and pro what I'm about to say is probably going to make a lot of people in the music industry mad at me is there's got to be a better way. You know, because in what I've from what I've observed and in my opinion as well, the music industry, the traditional music industry is more cookie cutter than it's ever been. If you're not making a certain type of music, you know, don't bore us, get to the chorus. You know, if you're a country artist, you better write about trucks and beer. If you're a pop artist, you better be a sad girl right now. There's no like there's no like tangible, like sustainable opportunity for you to break in that way into the traditional industry, you've got to do it independently. You have to. And so what ECM Collective now aims to do is give people the tools, the resources, the mindset, the connections in order to do that and build their platforms organically in a way that's authentic to them. You know, and I, a lot of this comes from observing what other, what musicians have gone through and other creatives have gone through in the process. You know, I've seen in my five years in Nashville, so many artists, you know, make the post about how excited they are that they're getting signed and this, that, and the other thing. And then two years later, they make the Instagram post saying, well, I got dropped from all that, but at least I get to write my own songs now, you know? So it's like, let's help people skip that step of going against your values and going against everything that makes your artistry what it is and makes your platform what it is. And let's build your platform straight out and let's connect you to everything that you need to do it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'm, I'm so glad that that people are starting to get that we don't have to work within those those confines for sure. So I'm curious with this new direction. So like you had kind of like a music collective before and now you're really connecting more creatives and entrepreneurs to the musicians. How is ECM going to be different from like your average music collective? Because there are plenty of them out there. 
Right, right. So we are, that's a great question too. So we're a membership organization. You can join up for the year. You can join up on a monthly basis. And we are offering educational opportunities like seminars, workshops, panels, going to start virtually and eventually expand to in-person. Uh, I've already got a few markets pegged for our first in-person markets. Of course, Nashville being one of them, greater Philadelphia being one, which includes that Lehigh Valley region where we started because we still have a nice strong foothold there. We're actually doing an event up there in Bethlehem at Steel Stacks on November 17th. Also eyeing up other areas. Southern California comes to mind. Chicago. I was going to you know, let me know because I'm in Southern California. I've been, I've been connecting with so many creators in Southern California lately. And like, it's such a rich ecosystem because you have the whole LA area, San Diego, like, you know, you have so much music and art and entertainment out there, yeah. right? So- An empire, Orange County, Santa Barbara, like there's so many places. Yeah, it's like, it's a natural move for us to establish a foothold out there, you know? SoCal, Chicago, New York, Atlanta are all on my radar. Austin, of course. You know, we want to start with a few. You know, again, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew. You want sustainable growth. So we're going to start with a lot of virtual programming, you know, as far as, you know, the educational stuff. Also, we're doing a, at least once a month. It's starting once a month, but I, I suspect it might move to more than that. Virtual coffee chats where our community gets together. There may be a speaker for some of these, the first 15, 20 minutes that lead, leads us into the day's discussion topic amongst the group. And it's a chance for people to connect, learn about each other, learn about what each other, you know, the other people in the group are working on as well and how we can help each other, how we can serve each other. There's a big service mindset behind everything that we're doing here at ECM. And so those features also, you know, we are leading on our roots as a media outlet as well. But the focus of our blog, the focus of our multimedia content is going to be focused on our members and the things happening with our members within the community, their updates. So if you're a musician, that could still be a music review. That could still be an interview that we've done. Or, you know, if you're not a musician, it could be like, hey, so-and-so released a book, so-and-so won an award. You know, this organization who's part of our organization just had this milestone, congratulating them on it. The Quinn Spin podcast is still part of this. I joke that it's like the cockroach that won't die in the nu in the nuclear blast. You know, no matter how the platform revolves, somehow the Quinn Spin still stays the Quinn Spin. But like talking to creatives, like we're really expanding. You know, we're still interviewing musicians, but like I just had Dylan Huey, who's a brilliant USC student. He's the CEO of Reach, which is a an organization across colleges and universities that really teaches and, and molds the next generation of social media influencers. And he has done so much, you know, and, and he's a musician as well, but he had, he wears a lot of hats, you know, just bringing all these different minds, these different ideas and perspectives into the fold to educate and to realize that like we have more common ground than we think, despite, you know, being in different industries or different lanes. Like there are so many things that we all experience, you know, the creative journey is the creative journey, no matter what lane you're in. And so we are creating this ecosystem that connects people uh, like no other. I mean, eventually, you know, I have pie in the sky ideas of hosting conferences and mm -hmm. retreats and that kind of thing. And I, I do believe we'll get there, you know, but it starts on the ground floor. It starts with, you know, these virtual offerings and then expanding to regional in-person offerings. You know, another thing that we're doing to help foster the community, especially as we start growing out our in-person offerings is we're enlisting the help of community leaders. If you're one of our ECM community leaders, you get to join for free. You get to help spearhead a lot of the events that we'll be putting on virtually and eventually in person. And every new member that you recruit, you receive 10% commission here to start. So we're incentivizing it for the people who really want to take the lead and be on the ground floor of what we're doing. We've already had some good people volunteer to be a part of that, this in that regard too. And I'm really excited to work with them, you know, and hearing what they have to say about it, you know, and hearing them use the word we, we are going in this direction. We are going to do this is really excited. And, you know, it takes somebody, I think, entrepreneurial minded, you know, community minded to step into that role. And we've already identified some great people and are always looking for more. So that's another way that we are doing things a little differently is we're giving a sense of ownership to the people who want that sense of ownership pretty much right off the bat. We're giving them a chance to really be in on the ground floor of building this thing. Yeah, I really like that. I mean, the more that people can buy in, you know, the the more they're going to be committed and and really get involved. Um, so this collective really brings musicians and creatives into the fold of entrepreneurs. And I'm curious, like what 
changes have you seen in the music industry over the last several years that make you feel like more than ever musicians have more in common with entrepreneurs? Well, I think technology does a lot of it for us, right? You know, we have more technology at our disposal than we ever have at any point in human history. And that's only going to continue evolving, right? And so that's what connects us all. And that's what gives us the opportunities to get our messages out there. However, it also means that everybody has that same access should they choose to use it. And so the focus on the story, the focus on who you are as an artist and how that reflects in everything you do, I think has become more and more important. Things have become a lot more transparent. Things have become a lot more real. You know, gone are the days where, you know, the cookie cutter artist brand, you know, that the industry has manufactured for you are, is really going to resonate. You know, and I mean, there's something to be said for, you know, the industry dollars being behind artists and that being the vehicle that drives them forward. But the artists that are, remain independent and succeed are the ones that find their thing and find their audience for that thing. You know, to put it in complete layman's terms, like find out what makes you you, find out your authentic story, find ways to communicate that story in ways that are accessible to your audience, you know, and in, in the process of that, you know, you're going to encounter some trial and error. You're going to encounter some folks that are in your audience that maybe your story, your brand doesn't resonate with, but all that does is it points your compass in, in a truer direction toward what's meant for you, what's meant for your platform. Right. And so leaning into that truth and stepping into it as fearlessly as possible. Fear never really goes away, but managing your fear around, you know, putting yourself out there in that way, I think is of increased importance because that's ultimately what makes you stand out, right? Ultimately, you want to do something that's going to differentiate you from everybody else creating this content, everybody else in this ecosystem. Gone are the days, again, where, you know, first name, middle name, I'm a sing singer songwriter from anywhere USA. Okay, you and everybody else, Find what makes you you and communicate that. You know, I Dylan Huey, I go back to him again because I just had him on the Quinn Spit. Um, literally, this the episode released yesterday as of the time we're recording this. And what is your value proposition? You know, and that's another way musicians should think as entrepreneurs. What is your value proposition? What do you offer your listener, your audience that they can't get anywhere else, essentially? And Dylan, if I mess that up, please feel free to correct me in the comments. But like... What 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 is your unique offering to the world? What can you do through your music, through your platform that nobody else can do? There's an audience for it. You just have to be clear in communicating it. And that audience will find you the more that you put that message out. So and, you know, the thing is, like for me too, building this platform, like I learn in the process of watching other people do that or watching other people drop that knowledge. It's like, you know, what is our value proposition as UCM? What is our, va what, what can we do in this ecosystem that is different? That's, you know, first best and interesting, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you, you need to find that thing or you're just going to be among the pack of everyone else trying the same techniques, trying to cash in on the same trends, trying to sound like this, trying to sound like that, you know, and once something's already been done, it's already been done and you have diminishing returns. You know, you think of like, Somebody like Taylor Swift, right, who clearly has that dialed in to the point where she, you know, she's taking a break from her era's tour right now, but she's still in the middle of it, you know, and like it goes through every single era that she's been through musically. But what's the common thread? The common thread is her and how she's connected to her Swifties so much so that they will follow her wherever she goes, including to now become fans of the Kansas City Chiefs, right? Like she's found that thing and it's so dialed in. She is a business genius. You know, and, you know, she relates to her audience quite like nobody else we've ever seen, you know, but by that same token, what you don't want to do is if you're seeing that and you're a young female artist is you don't want to label yourself as the next Taylor Swift because Taylor Swift is already Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's already been done. And every single iteration of that, every single iteration of that same design is going to have diminishing returns. I grew up in the nineties. I saw the boy band era. You had the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC at the top of the food chain. And then everything that came out of Orlando after that had diminishing returns to the point where you don't remember half of them, right? I mean, you remember 98 Degrees and O-Town and LFO after that. Do you remember any of them? No, because it was the same formula 
over and over and over again, milk dry. You have to find what works in that formula. You can be influenced by that formula, but at the end of the day, you have to make it your own and you have to find yourself in that and figure out what makes you, you communicate. Yeah. And we're so lucky that we have all these platforms, these online platforms, social media, YouTube, all of that to get that across and be able to connect with people, you know, that are going to love our individualness. But what is the role of streaming in all of this? Because, you know, that's like another big change that's happened over the past like 15 years. Yeah. And especially since the pandemic, um, you know, technology like Zoom, which we're using right now, (laughs) you know, like it, you know, it's it's opened up a whole new world for us to be able to connect, you know, through live stream experiences, live stream interviews, concerts, uh, the, the whole nine, you know, and it allows fans that, you know, aren't in a particular area. Maybe your favorite artist isn't touring near you, but hey, they're streaming their concert from Red Rocks and you can watch it live from wherever you are in the country or world. Right. It allows artists and fans and anybody else to connect to experiences that they didn't have the opportunity to connect with before, you know? So if you're living in rural Montana, say you can watch a concert that's happening at Red Rocks. You can watch a concert that's happening anywhere else in the country and connect to your favorite artists that way and continue that conversation and continue to build that community, right? From wherever you are. And so it's, it's very powerful. And I think that's one of the silver linings from COVID, right? Is this opportunity that we've all had this, resourcefulness that we've all found to make those connections and even though the world is open again now to continue those conversations when we can't be there in person or when you know it's too far away or you know wh- whatever the case may be like we still have the opportunity to engage each other you know as creators but also as fans and continue to build yeah yeah it is so great that we do have that opportunity as especially when everything happened with COVID, like it didn't shut us entirely down, which is awesome. And it gave it just opened up a whole nother, uh, you know, stream of income and way to connect with people. I'm curious, like what what is your vision for the future? Like, where do you think we are going with musicians and entrepreneurship and all of that beyond where we are now? You know, I say I think we're going to continue to see this meld between the two worlds for sure you know and music touches everything you know music touches every form of entertainment like this world would be so much you know less vibrant without music informing the course of our daily lives it you know it's it's really the heartbeat of society it's the heartbeat of creativity and entrepreneurship and so i think the musicians that are going to succeed and the musicians that are going to find you know you know, find the the platform, the ability to build the platform that they want are the ones who are going to embrace this entire world around them, are the ones who are going to embrace the opportunities to connect with the greater world of entrepreneurship, with, you know, embracing this technology and continuing to evolve with it and make it their own, right? You know, it pains me to hear people say, oh, I wish we could go back to the days of selling CDs out of your car trunk. Like, okay, like, yeah, there's a certain nostalgia for that, but like, that's just not where the world's going right now. And although like, you know, like cassette tapes tapes have made a comeback, vinyl, of course, has come back very strong. Like, CD, there's rumblings about CDs coming back too, but that's never gonna be the main way that people access music again, because it's just too easy to have it at your fingertips. No, this gonna be a retro thing that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, you know, your hipsters are gonna love it, right? But it's like, at the end of the day, like, you know, people are going to consume their content digitally going forward, you know, through streaming, through, you know, these different platforms and experiences. So how do you continue to make those platforms your own? And how do you engage people to meet them where they are? Because so much of this, you know, so much of building your platform is meeting people where they are, engaging with your audience where they exist, you know, as opposed to letting them or expecting them to come to you You have to think, "Hmm, how can I get my word out there? But also, how can I make it relatable to them so they care about it, right? And so it's that exchange. It's that value proposition, right? It's like, what can I provide to you through what I do that's going to keep you coming back? And so the musician who wins here in the future, the entrepreneur who wins in general, any creator who wins, is is the person who keeps that value proposition in mind. How am I creating value? How am I communicating that value? 
And how is that value resonating to the point where people keep coming back to me for that value? Right. And so it's, you know, it's going to be a continuation of that as technology continues to evolve, as AI continues to gain prominence and figuring out how to use AI, how to make AI your own, how to humanize it in a way that's going to help you better connect. You know, what to delegate to AI so you can focus on creating, so you can focus on the art. I think AI is another thing that gets such a bad rap because everyone's, you know, waiting for 1984 to come. But, <laughs> but like, there are ways to use these tools in a way that actually frees you up to create more, in a way that get, gives you a baseline so then you can create from that, right? I saw a video with Gary Vee uh, a couple of weeks ago about how he doesn't use AI necessarily to create. He uses it to help him think. He uses it to help him research. So then he can think and he can create off of that. So it informs the things that, you know, are created out of his agency and his ecosystem, right? It's a tool, just like any other tool, just like streaming, you know, the streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music are a tool for us to use to get our message out there. Just like the social platforms, AI is just another tool in our tool belt that if you use it wisely, enhances what we're able to do in the creative space. So give it a chance, you know, is what is what I would tell anybody is like, give the new technology a chance, give yourself a chance to learn it. It's never too late to learn it. You know, whether you're Gen Z, millennial, Gen X, even, you know, going up into the boomer region, you know, generationally, like, there's always a chance to learn. These tools are here for all of us. And the people who learn them, no matter where you are in life, no matter where you are in your journey, those are the people who are going to endure and continue to grow. Yeah. I mean, we just actually recently put out an episode about using AI. So I think you're absolutely spot on on that. Um, I'm curious, and and I think that you, you will agree with me, uh, live music still has a place in this world, right? We, we- Absolutely. We still can connect with people in a way that is like no other in person. Absolutely. And I'm glad you said that, too, because all this talk about technology, it can be easy to forget that. Right. But like in in my opinion, as as much as I'm for all of these developments and, you know, will advocate till the cows come home for people learning how to use them. Right. To me, there's still no better way to connect and actually build rapport that in person, whether it's at a live music event, whether it's a networking event, whatever it is, like you need to get out into the world. And that's just another way. That's, I think, the still the most pure and authentic way to this day to meet people where they are. Now, not always possible. You're in Southern California. I'm here in Nashville. This makes it easy for us to connect. But, you know, if I'm ever out there, or you're ever here, now we have a basis to go off of, you know, to connect at an in-person event, right? And so the technology enhances our human experience if we allow it to, but it's still very important to go out and have that human experience. We all live through 2020 and we all know what it was like to only have this means for the most part to interact with other people, right? And so while it helped a lot of us get through, it also, you know, felt limiting to a lot of us after a while. I know I speak for myself when I say that. I couldn't wait to get back out into the world, yeah. you know? and actually go experience things in person. Like it does just hit differently in person, whether it's live music or any other experience. So definitely make sure, like I've actually recommitted myself because I, you know, over the past year, I th I've been holding up behind technology just because I've just been so busy with things and to try to develop and grow this platform, right? That I've forgotten for non-COVID reasons to go back out into the world, right? So I've recommitted myself over the past couple months, like, Go out at least once a week and experience an event and go make connections. Bring the camera, you know, like have that be a conversation starter. Maybe it lands some gigs, but like there's only so much, especially with so many people rolling out content that you can do through social media. There needs to be that in-person element that, you know, those handshakes, <laughs> you know, that are exchanged, those conversations that are had face to face that are going to help you connect to people in a way that you can't quite do any other way. Yeah, I just thought it was really important to say that because I am such a proponent of, you know, you can't just completely cut out the live aspect. And so, you know, it's a balance, right? And it's a, like you said, like we are able to, it, this technology helps us take the first step. Like we're able to get to know each other this way. But if we met in person, we would get to know each other so much better and so much faster than exactly. over Zoom. So it's the same thing with musicians and their audiences, I think. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I, I have to say, you know, during 2020, 2021, when people were speculating, like, is this the future of live music? Will there ever be live music again? Uh, or are we just going to do this? I'm like, well, I hope not. Now, like, this is this is fine, and don't get me wrong. Like, you know, there are there are live streams that I watch that I still remember, and I'll go back and rewatch the videos. Dirty Heads did a live stream of each of their albums throughout the course of 2020, and I tuned in for those. Like, it was appointment viewing for me every other week when, when they did them. I love those things and I'll go back and watch those live performances still to this day. Cause like there was, you know, it was a bastion of sanity in those times in the spring and summer of 2020, but you know, I'd much rather go see them live. I'd much rather go out and enjoy a live experience, you know, and have that opportunity to do so. And I'm glad it's back. I'm, you know, I always knew like we'd get back to this point, you know, kind of intrinsically, like, you know, it, you know, things get, I think, a lot of hyperbole when we're in the moment of like, this is the way it's always going to be forever. The sky is falling. The world is ending, you know, and like in a lot of respects, like we did, it wasn't, there was a lot of uncertainty. I'm not trying to downplay that, but at the same time, like, you know, we were going to find a way humans are resili resilient creatures and there was always going to be a way forward. And I'm, I'm glad I was right. I'll put it that way. Me too. I was, I'm very glad you were right. Well, before we finish the interview, I just want to ask you, cause I know that you have worked with some pretty big name musicians and I'd love to hear maybe a story or two about your experience with that. Yeah. You know, so much of it has so much of what we've done here over the years has just allowed me to connect with people as, as people. Right. And it was amazing to me. So a few months ago, this was, I believe February, I had a young man who signed to Island records by the name of Will Lindley on the show. He's from South Africa. He's based there. And he was really, at the time, starting to blow up there and in Europe and that kind of thing. A young guy, I think 20, 21 at the time. I feel like I've heard him on TikTok. You probably have. You uh -huh. probably have, because that's where he blew up was, okay. was TikTok. I think my daughter sent me a TikTok or something of him. Yeah, yeah. And so Universal Music Group was connecting us to artists like Will for, you know, for a good period of time there, uh, you know, in the umc in the late umc stage you know <laughs> and talking to will was 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 interesting because like you have this you have this guy that has the whole world in front of him you know who's blowing up but he was so real and authentic and humble and just like grateful for everything that was coming into his life at that point you know and it was so refreshing to like see somebody who you know whose platform was just exploding but still like, you know, get to know them and get to know like where they started, you know, in, in, in their whole journey and knowing that it wasn't, you know, too far in the past that, you know, they were just starting out and just, you know, figuring out exactly, you know, who they were as an artist and how they were going to communicate that watching that come together for somebody in real time, like, like it, like it has for Will over the past couple of years, it, it, that's really exciting, inspiring to watch. And it shows me, you know, as somebody building a platform, it shows hopefully other people who listen to or watch that episode of the Quinn spin, like that it's possible for you too. You know, this is somebody who, you know, is from South Africa, you know, and use technology during the pandemic to connect to the rest of the world and grow his platform to the point where he gets to wake up and do this for a living every day. You know, it's possible for somebody, you know, anywhere in the world almost to do that now. And so that was a really cool story, you know, and just, yeah, just the opportunities we've had, you know, through, you know, connecting with these universal artists, connecting, you know, with people in other spheres, you know, I had the opportunity to interview uh, Nate Bain, who's a social media director for the Tennessee Titans uh, last year, and just like connecting to that world and seeing how like the world of the NFL connects to the creative space, connects to the community, to music. Like we had a really good conversation. The Titans were doing a battle of the bands here in town for a couple of years and giving independent artists a chance to participate and win uh, a slot to perform at halftime during an NFL game. Like, it's it's amazing to see like the dots that connect when you're in an ecosystem like this and like how how we're all connected. And, you know, a lot of that, I think, has really informed this new direction, you know, seeing how, you know, seeing how close by all these opportunities are for us to connect and really build something meaningful. Um, and without experiences like those I just named and others, like I don't know that I would have had the chance to see that wouldn't have ha I would have had the chance to put that together. So it's inspiring to me as the journey goes forward and uh, it inspires everything we do. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very cool that you've had that opportunity and, and it just shows when we connect the right people, 
what what cool new things we can do and create that we haven't even thought of yet. So um, I would love to find out how people can connect with you on social media, how they can find out more about ECM Collective. Yeah, so we'll start with ECM. At ECM Collective everywhere, uh, Instagram, Facebook, X. I, I still, I'm still getting trouble. Oh, it's Twitter. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, we're in all those places, um, as well as, as of Monday, October 2nd, ecmcollective.com. If you go to undergroundmusiccollective.com, that's fine. It'll just redirect you. Tap in with us. We're building a great community and I'm so, so, so excited to, you know, have so many brilliant minds across industries, across disciplines, locations involved. Uh, the Quinn Spin still going strong. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, and more. Also on the socials at Quinn Spin official on Instagram, two ends and Quinn, two ends and Spin. And our Facebook page has actually been gaining a little more traction again lately, which, you know, is interesting because for a while, you know, I pretty much found that pointless Facebook, but it's coming back. It's coming back strong. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we should get a TikTok for both of those things too pretty soon. Um, I've, you know, I, I talk about all this embracing technology, but I've, as an elder millennial, resisted TikTok at this point. So. And there's just so many, like, you know, to be on all the different platforms and try to play to the strengths of each platform, it can get exhausting. Yeah, yeah. And then if you want to follow me on Instagram at Gerard Longo 12, you can do that. It's a lot of updates about the things we've talked about today, but also some travel and family and fitness stuff. So if you want to get to know me personally, that's where to do it. Cool, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for you know, all the information about your collective, all the great things you're doing to help musicians and connect them with entrepreneurs, how to just even help promote the idea of musicians being entrepreneurs and learning how to function like entrepreneurs, growing those, you know, skills and stuff. So thank you so much for all of that. And thank you for sharing with us today. Thanks for having me. So happy to be here. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.